welcome everyone to another episode of Raising Star Seeds. Today we have James Gilliland with Eseti Ranch joining us. Hello, James. Hi, Heidi. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. You know, James, I'm 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 really excited to have you on the show because you know we've been talking with a lot of the parents and it's it's really time. I, I want to kind of bring this back onto a, a spiritual level. And, you know, there's a number of parents around the world and you are saying, again, they are feeling this straw that it, it is, it's time to start looking out for the children. So what, what, are, what are you hearing from your global audience? Well, one of the things uh, I've, I've written about this in newsletters um, since God, I, I hate to say it, but like we're going on our 36th year right now of, of ESETI and I was doing things even before that. And kind of warning about these things coming the days to come. And and they were they were talking a long time ago about how people were gonna to have to take back their power and kind of uh come together in groups and uh there would be a lot of uh like sanctuaries and schools and things like that that where they would teach people the basic, you know, universal uh principles, you know, like uh, universal law or unity consciousness, things like that. And, and that would be part of the curriculum. So, and we've seen right now a total fail in society because everything's profit driven, you know, and it's taken over. It's taken over every, every level of government, every level of media, almost every, there's just some alternative media that, and some, some have been taken over to one degree or another. Some are maybe will give you 80% truth, but they just won't go all the way. You know, they're afraid to go all the way and tell you the whole th story. And, and so they talked about these times that we're in and, and they're, you know, when you talk to like, um, I, I probably have to frame this, but when, when I was five years old, I was dying. I was in the hospital. I was dying and Mary came to me. And so uh, and pull me out of it. And, and so I have a very close connection with Mary and the divine feminine and other beings, and they're just outraged at what's going on, especially with the children. And so they're inspiring that divine feminine energy is coming in big time, inspiring, you know, mama bears and the mothers to step up to the plate and the men have to get behind that. And, uh, and that's, that's what's taking down this old, old guard, you know, this old program. And, and so they, they warned about this, they knew it was coming and what I'm seeing right now is that energy is coming in really strong right now. And there's there's some mothers that are listening, that are heart-centered. And there's some that are just so socially engineered, they're just not going to get it. And they're going to take their kids with them. It's, it's sad. It, it's sad. But, you know, if you look at the riots, you look at, you know, what, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go down a dark road, but, you know, this Rittenhouse thing that we just went through, mm -hmm. um, you know, that kid was trying to help. He was scrubbing graffiti off of buildings. He stopped a trash, a dumpster. They lit a dumpster on fire. We're going to push it into the gas station, which was his, his grandfather and grandmother's gas station that he was guarding. Uh, you know, there was all these other things happening in there. You know, any way you look at it, it was self-defense. You know, he was beaten. He was, had a gun in his face and, and threatened, I'm going to kill you and stuff like that. But anyway, to go down that road, you know, here's this kid that's going, hey, I, I want to protect my family. You know, I want to pet my grandmother, my grandfather, you know, um, their business, you know, they're running this gas station. And, and there's so much more to that story. And, and then you've got this other group out there and you look at the characters on the other side, they have no foundation whatsoever. I mean, they have a history of violence, especially towards women and things like that. So you have these two things being played out there. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and so you have the one side, the old guard wants to create division and separation on every level, race, mm -hmm. culture, religion, gender, you know, they're going in that direction. And the other side is, is saying, hey, you know, I want to live, I have a right to live a loving, joyous, abundant life. You know, there's no reason why we all can't have this. And I want my kids to be safe and protected and things like that. So both sides are, are playing out right now. They're both playing out right now. And, and it's up to us to like create an alternative, you know, uh, 
you know, find ways that we can teach, you know, universal law or unity consciousness, and uh, which is really basic, and and get that into the schools, create our own schools, uh, get it on on the website, you know, get it on, you know, really have a huge awakening of universal law. And, and basically what it is, it's universal peace, brother, sister, love, individual freedom and prosperity for everybody. That's universal law in a nutshell, you know, but uh, there's more to it than that because they have like a, a galactic law too as well, you know, <clears throat> that go, that's more in depth or more defined. But uh, I, I think the main problem is that there has been an effort for a long time, for at least 60, 70 years, it's been an effort to polarize everybody, divide and conquer, you know, polarize, polarize the religions, polarize the genders, the cultures, the races, everything, and just keep everything. Uh, and, and then they want, you know, to reduce the population and, and by us doing it to each other. And, you know, it's just, a, it's a big mess. And so we have to cover that. I mean, I don't want to take the dark side, dark road, but we, you know, there's an old saying enlightenment means being in knowledge of the whole story, the big, not just half the story, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so we, we need to know that there's a multidimensional force that has been operating on a very negative level to would like to see a lot of us gone. And then on the bright light side, there's a multidimensional force that's really in control right now that's coming forward. And it's, it's beyond, most people's comprehension. They, it goes back to the source itself. It goes up. I've seen it up going up to the 13th dimension uh, to mm -hmm. these beings that are interacting. And they're saying enough, enough, you know, you've interfered with the destiny of earth for so long that um, the earth's original destiny was to be like a jewel, you know, a jewel of the galaxy. It was the, a place where, where everything could reach its highest potential, could evolve to its highest potential. It was basically an Eden. That was the original plan, and it got hijacked. And so now the hijackers are being taken out. They're being taken care of, and so it can re, um, it can get, you know, back on track. And that we as way showers have to have that foundation so we can pass it on to the children and 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 create a whole different foundation than what they've been given through, you know, all the social engineering and social media and lamestream media, all that stuff that we have to. Pull, pull them out of that and give them a whole different perspective on life and how to interact with life on all levels. Yeah. You know, I got the same message for, um, for earth that it was one of the, the seven Edens of the universe and we were supposed to be yeah. one of them. Um, you know, I, with what we're seeing right now, you know, on a spiritual level, it is, it's, we're witnessing how we have put fear up as our new God. Yeah. That it's, you know, and, and, it, and it can be applied to everything, even with the, with the Rittenhouse case, because yeah. they are trying to make people, based on that trial, put placed in a space of fear, swear then you wouldn't go out like Kyle was trying to defend his grandparents' location, trying to defend their town, yeah. because again, it's just another layer of fear. And, you know, when I sometimes work with spirit, some people's concerns, you know, their answer to their answer to them was, well, are you worried about control? Because really what your what your concern is is that you won't be in control of a situation because fear and control are so tightly yeah. wound together. And it is um, putting faith in ourselves that once we move beyond fear, we can go into a place of manifestation and allow that to be flowing into our lives. And, and that is, you know, the, the higher dimensional energy that we can exist within. But we have to get, we, we got to take the, the fear God off its pedestal. Yeah, it's like the kid, where did he come from? Was yeah. he coming from, uh, I'm a white supremacist and I'm going to kill all those people that are rioting because I don't believe in what they're doing, which is what they're trying to paint. Yeah. Or was, was he coming for love for his parents and his grandparents and he wanted to protect his neighborhood? And, and from all of his actions, he was coming from love, you know, and, and protection. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, more people should do that. We wouldn't have all these problems today. Right. So, you know, he was, he was protecting his family, his neighborhood, 
He was cleaning the graffiti off of things, putting off out fires. He was offering aid to people that were injured. Um, you know, he was a model kid, basically, you know, and he was doing the best he can. He was coming from love and concern for his family and his and his uh, neighborhood, which I think he should get a purple heart for, you know, yeah. you know? so uh, um, I know that would be a good one. But you look at all the people that are on the other side of the fence, where are they, what's their come from? Yeah. yeah. You know, they're extremely wounded. They're extremely angry. Mm -hmm. uh, they're projecting all of that into this situation. Uh, they're not making any sense. They're telling lies and deceiving. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so where's their come from? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, um, you know, and, and it's sad, but most of them have been socially engineered or, they have a lot of unhealed wounds and traumas from past experiences, either childhood or, or later, and it might be generational, but a lot of them are acting out against things that just no longer exist. You know, they're, it's, it's so, it, there's only one thing else I wanted to say about that. There's a story, you, you, have you heard about the rabbit and the eagle? And that what happens is the, the rabbit comes running out in the field, you know, and looks up and the eagle's in the tree just doing his thing. And the rabbit goes, oh my God, there's an eagle, there's an eagle. And the eagle doesn't even see him, right? Mm -hmm. And he starts running all over the place in a frantic, you know, frenzy. The eagle, the eagle, it's gonna get me, it's gonna get me, you know? And the eagle's going, still doesn't see him, you know, it doesn't pain. And then he starts screaming, you know, and, and running back and forth and making all kinds of noise. The eagle, the eagle, screaming, the eagle's gonna get me, he's gonna get me, you know? He goes, eagle's evil, the evil's bad, you know, it's kind of, and, and, and then finally the eagle turns around and he sees him and he comes down and gets him, right? And so if he would have just said, well, okay, you know, uh, uh, I'm not going to get in fear. I'm not going to let fear take over me. I'm not going to project the past and this, you know, I'm just going to be calm and, and sit here, you know, everything would be fine. And, and that's what happens. And, and if you get in a good person's face, with all this anger and resentment and call them racist and every name in the book, eventually they are going to become the eagle. They're going to say enough of this. You know, I am not this person you're projecting on me. I'm not going to take this, this aggression mm -hmm. and uh, I don't deserve it. And enough's enough. And that's, that's what, what's, what's happening right now is that, is that people are just saying, you know, I'm, I'm not what you're projecting on me. I'm not this person. I, I, I'm not a slave owner, you know, I love everybody equally, mm -hmm. you know, I don't care what race, color, or gender you are, you know, it's just like, and, and just, just allow me the right to do my own thing and live my life the way I see fit without all these external pressures. Mm -hmm. And so the more you pressure people to accept all this victim programming, all these other things, the more, you know, the more they're going to resist and pretty soon you're going to create that reality the very reality that you were afraid of. So, yeah. and that's where we're at right now. And so we have to, like, it goes back to the social engineering. Well, social engineering could be good or bad. You can socially engineer the kids to follow universal law, be loving, be kind to each other, you know, uh, support each other, uh, realize the unity of life, uh, that everything is connected in the unified field, you know, teach them things like that. And then you're going to have an awesome society. Mm -hmm. and, and so like everything, you know, it's, it's like, uh, uh, it's all your come from. It all goes back to your come from, where are you coming from? Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. if you're coming from love and you're coming from service and you want to help and you want to protect and things like that, then great. Yeah. you've got the right come from, you know, if you're coming from an angry wounded past and you want to create more division, more separation, and you want to create that reality, then that's just not functional anymore, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. with the earth and where it's going. Mm -hmm. and, and so tyranny is no longer frequency specific and all these victim roles aren't frequency specific to the earth anymore and where she's going. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have two options. We either heal and face our wounds and traumas and own them and, and forgive ourselves and forgive others, you know, for creating these realities and participating and move on. And, uh, you know, or we can recreate everything and just create a big mess. And, and some are going to create the big mess and some aren't. Some are going to take personal responsibility and heal and move forward. And some are just going to uh, continue. But 
the problem that everything is amplified right now. Mm -hmm. So karma is being ex accelerated. Everything is being amplified right now. Mm -hmm. And so, and accelerated. So people that are choosing that negative path are going to have that negative path, but it's going to be amplified and accelerated. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I think not only is it being amplified, but people really need to recognize the media manipulation that takes place. They yeah. have to, they're just getting their news source from a delivery that's been scripted and that's yeah. been organized. And if people can just recognize what's the root of it, you know, the good versus evil of it, where is he coming from? People aren't doing their own journalistic research anymore. They're just like, tell me what the story is. And then they're loosh bombs. We get yeah. loosh bombed time and time again because we get harvested from our loosh. And I think that's a whole nother round of narrative that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And and we need more spiritual warriors that can recognize it in the first place. Because mm -hmm. even good people within the community are now, you know, downtrodden and you know, yeah. they're they're being feasted on right now. And it's like, come on, we know what this is. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of manipulation going on right now. It's, it's I, hard to yeah. I call it the RNN, the Reptilian News Network, you know, or the, <laughs> or the a AMBC, you know, like Archon <laughs> Media Broadcast, you know, and, and that's basically what's going on right now. And yeah. people, but you know, the good news is, I've, I've, their latest figures, they're down minimum of seventy to eighty, almost ninety percent. They're losing their their viewers, mm -hmm. so oh. people are waking up and they're turning mm -hmm. off their TVs and not going in because. They've caught them lying so many times. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the Russia thing alone should make you switch the channel. Because how long have they lied about that? You know, and there's a million other things they lied about. But you know, at what at what point do you go, wow, um, they've lied to me about nine or ten times now. I these guys are pathological liars, and I don't know why I should go to them for any information. You know, because yeah. it's because it's a deception. You know, yeah. so I think that's what's happening now. Well, and it was it was so obvious and sinister when they are using the Sesame Street narrative to come after these kids. I mean, they they are, you know, we were discussing before we jumped on here, the the propaganda machine with these kids and hitting them at all levels. I've been hearing yeah. the, the the bullying that's going on at school now and, and the teachers are showing, you know, they're a class of second graders, she's been overhearing the kids asking other kids, have you gotten the jab yet? Have you gotten the jab yet? Why have you gotten the jab yet? And, yeah. you know, and, and they are, they're trying to, to normalize this, that this is part of just open communication, that this is appropriate things to talk about to one another. Yeah. Um, well, the same yeah. thing with the critical race stuff, you know, too, that's creating so many divisions, you know, and, yeah. and kids are, kids are so wide open, they don't know what to think, you know, and, and you're feeding them all this crap. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, next thing you know, they're going, wow, I'm a white racist. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a terrible person. I'm a, and they don't even know anything about that yet, you know, but they're already uh, feeling guilty about just being white you know or being any other color in between mm -hmm. but uh uh or or special you know you owe all these other people something you know we're all equal basically yeah. and uh and we're evolving out of the past history and a lot of things happen in history you mm -hmm. know native americans to the blacks and you know some of the largest kind of slaves that came over here were irish you know and people yeah. don't talk about that or they were, they were Chinese, you know, from China, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but you know, I don't, I don't see anybody doing Chinese lives matters or, or Irish lives matters or, you know, wh where's their bracket, you know? Yeah. And, and so, you know, we're taught this false history or just to focus on one group and that's to divide. Yeah. You know, well, and look, what, what if all of them came together and said, you know, slavery is a bad thing. It doesn't matter what color you are. It's yeah. a bad thing. It happened to all of us. Let's end this. Let's 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 all work together. You know that would be the the right thing to do if you're going to teach something in school. Yeah. Well, you know, and to let them understand that we are all the whole globe is a slave system. It's just to what degree are you enslaved? But all of exactly. all of us are enslaved, and to understand <laughs> to understand. I that. think that's a big unifier. I really do. Mm -hmm. I've been getting that when I've been meditating. Mm -hmm. You know all this this reparations thing and i go god we're, we've all been enslaved 
Yep. You know, since mm-hmm. ever since we got our birth certificate. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. and you know, and, and we, we talk about ancestral healing, you know, a lot. And yeah. so yeah, absolutely in our in our lineages, you know, you go back to James Howell, like you know, the Irish. I'm part Irish and French. So the Irish were heavily enslaved. So that's I'm feeling that in the DNA. So all of our DNA has physically been truly enslaved. And so we're here yeah. to literally break that away. And I've been feeling so, you know, in terms of spirituality, the the angelic realm has been so powerfully involved and they're here. And it's almost, you know, to, to let all of our viewers know, there are so many higher dimensions that are here right now. And it's like they they're they're prepared to walk through the fire with us. Yeah. Because we are gonna have to walk through that fire, but they're yeah. going to do it shoulder to shoulder with us because mm-hmm. it has to all be burnt and go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has to come up. I mean, mm-hmm. part of the awakening healing process, as I said before, there's we're going through a highly energized place in space we've never been before. Mm-hmm. And the the incoming energies from from external sources, some we don't even know what the origin of, are just increasing exponentially. There's like maybe 50 bursts, you know, and now it's a, it used to be up to 500. I don't know where it is now, a thousand or something. You look at the human resonance is off the scale. You know, it's it's unbelievably it's going up to a thousand, you know, sometimes it's it's insane what's happening there. And then you've got the coronal mass ejection. And we're in these solar minimums and we're getting blasted by solar flares and things like that. Well, a lot of that is all happening. It it's like this whole climate change thing is not driven by carbon it's driven by other cycles, much bigger cycles, and the sun and what it does, and the sun is affected by other cycles, and it's where our whole solar system is moving into the universe. So it's a much bigger thing happening. And so the earth has this destiny that nobody can stop. I mean, it's, it's massive. And she has a destiny to ascend and go to the next level. Mm-hmm. And we have a choice, we have free will, we can either go with us, with her, and evolve and continue to be here, or we can take the downward spiral and move off to some other dim- lower dimension after we cross over or take ourselves out. That's the options we have. And I'm just being blunt, you know, that's basically what's happening. And, and this is all, this isn't woo woo stuff, this is science, you know, it's all about consciousness and energy and influxes of enter- energy and sympathetic resonance. So, so you have all the masters, angelic beings, the spiritually and technologically advanced off-worlders, you know, all the way up to the 13th dimension that I've experienced, I can talk about because I've experienced it, are pressing their consciousness and energy to help Earth do this transition. It goes back to the source itself, whatever name, God, creator, great spirit, you know, divine, film, whatever name you want to give it, um, the, uh, is, is coming in and and it's coming down through all the dimensions. Mm-hmm. And so we can, we can actually measure it in the physical by, by the solar flares and the, and the electromagnetic light spectrum, which is off the scale right now. We can actually measure this process. So it's really simple. It's like higher conscious and energy in, garbage out, you know, but it comes up. So the energy comes in, everything comes up to the surface. And part of, part of that system is, um, the chaos will come up and everything will be exposed. All the darker beings, their agendas and everything else are gonna come up and we're gonna look, it's gonna look like the world's going through hell in a handbasket, but it's part of the healing process. Mm-hmm. And, and so we have to, like you're saying, we have to go through that. It's part of the process. And a lot of that is so we won't, so we can gain the wisdom from that experience and not repeat it, you know? And that's what it's all about. It's about evolution on the upward spiral versus the downward spiral. So there are people that are gonna take the downward spiral and they're gonna get more controlling, more tyrannical, more greedy, you know, more, and they're gonna take themselves out. That's, and, and they're gonna, we're gonna, they've always been there, but now they're gonna be exposed and everybody's gonna see who they are and what they've done. And so, so we're in the, we're in the exposing who they are and what they've done process right now and and then and we're on the way of 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 actively ridding ourselves of these beings you know and they're they're doing it to themselves we don't they're they're having heart attacks their whole empires are crumbling they're they're 
they're out of alignment with universal law. So they're going to take themselves out basically. But the, the part, my, my line is the children, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm really having a hard time practicing loving detachment when they go after the children. And, and I know the mothers definitely are not going to go for this. Yeah. And they're going to step up to the plate. And that's, you got the mama bear and all the other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where we need to really support and give them a voice and give them a, you mm -hmm. know, we really have to do all we can right now to protect the children and educate mothers that don't have a clue that are just so socially engineered. They're just going along with the program. Right. But yeah. You know what, in, in the future, when they see the consequences of that, um, it's going to be horrendous you know, the, the, the emotional trauma they're going to experience. Right. And, and just in my God, I can't believe, you know, what I did, you know, so, uh, you know, there, we've got to find ways of supporting that and, and getting them back on board and, and, and actually cleaning this up, you know, this stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. which is going to go on and is going to continue to go on. There's that great meme of a parent holding a huge shield up over their kid and then all the arrows are on the shield, but yeah. the kid's like happy in there. Like, Hey, I'm reading a book. It's like, it's all about protecting them right now. Yeah. While this, this craziness happens, but our big thing is about being the solution. We want to do what, what's our next bit. And I think finding the others and, you know, having this platform and, bringing all this stuff up is important, but finding the others and is, ma is making a positive step forward, I think. Because it's yeah, I think, I think it's all about critical thinking and yeah. research outside the box and, and learn to say no, don't participate in any of this stuff, anything that's harmful to the planet or humanity or the kids and, uh, and don't comply. And, and a lot of people think they're complying because they're a good parent and they want their kids to be safe. Actually, if they do comply, they're doing the opposite. They're putting their kids in danger mm -hmm. and they're not going to be safe. And a matter of fact, it's, it's they're participating in, in them and their children's harm, or even divide, demise, you know? So, and, and that's, that's where the education has to get out. You know, we have to, you know, through alternative media, we can say, hey, look at the real facts, look at the real science, you know. And uh, I just saw a thing the other day where just massive amounts of doctors and lawyers and everybody are filing suit right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and some of these suits are like $500 trillion suits against these people that have made, you know, they become billionaires, you know, so mm -hmm. they're going to lose everything in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, part of, part of my, you know, passion in, in terms of doing the work is, is to really connect with, with the parents and really helping them to open up to their own natural intuition, because then when they are operating in that space then they can more easily suss out, suss out these agendas yeah. and they can feel, wait, this doesn't feel off. There's something off in my body. So I'm going to just remove myself from the situation. So it's, activating as parents and then they can be those strong shields for those kids like in that meme because the kids are already fully awakened like they're they're yeah. already, they're already there they just need us to shield and i think so often you know a lot of these parents are they really are convincing themselves that if we just go through with this like the two weeks right. to flatten the curve right. you know they're still in that cyclical thinking of this is awful. I don't agree with this, but I'm just going to do this because if I'm a good boy and girl, then this will all go away. But again, like you guys said, it's the participation that we're 20 months in. Yeah. They keep, they, yeah. they're waiting for somebody to tell them it's over instead of them saying I'm done. Like it's yeah. up to yeah. personal power and sovereignty. That's all we're waiting on is everybody else to catch up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an important point. You know, why, why wait for them to say it's over? Just say I'm done with it. Yeah. That is so important that when the masses, and they are, I mean, you look, it's funny, you don't see this on any of the mainstream news, but I'm seeing videos of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people rising up and uh, kind of sneeze I'm, coming off it. I'm so things. proud. I'm so proud of all of our European and Australian brothers and sisters. They, they are every single weekend on the streets uh -huh. resisting yeah. this. I, I, every single time I watch it, I get a little tear in my eye because you do, you, when, when you're seeing that you can feel the energy and you do realize we're all connected. Those are literally our brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, 
it's the same. We're the same fractured soul seven billion times on the planet. Yeah, yeah. And the people that are perpetuating this nonsense, they can't walk the streets. They can't go anywhere in public. No. And there's nowhere they can go. And they're, they have massive armed guards and they're hiding and they have to be snuck in and out of, of so they can do their propaganda things. And, and uh, yeah. you really look about it, what did they gain? You know, they've got no love, no respect, no joy. Uh, what was what was the purpose? You know, you got some power because you can, mm -hmm. you know, you can manipulate other people who aren't paying attention. But that's not real power. The real power is love, and love always empowers. It always serves. And so, that's not power. You know, that's and basically, there's a universal law. You can never, you can never take from another what is theirs or keep what's not yours. You know, so. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be temporary. You may be able to take something or become a multi-billionaire through this process. You're going to lose it all. Mm -hmm. And it's all going to go back to the people you harm, basically. And that's that's just universal law. So it's And the energy coming in is amplifying universal law. So they're sealing their own fate, you know, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know, and, and for, you know, a, a lot of the listeners at home, you know, one thing that I do, because again, we, we can feel these energies and we're feeling the collective. And I know a lot of people are feeling like down days or, you know, I'm just like, all of a sudden I just feel really negative or upset. Um, you know, one thing that I do is if, if I'm starting to feel an emotion that I'm not necessarily knowing where it's come from, I always, I go within and say, is it mine? Yeah, and if, it's, and if it's not mine, then I don't give it. I, I don't give it space there. I mm. kick it out and say, "You you do not get to live within me. This is not mine." And and that, that is that that is so powerful. Um, I that I mean, we just did several counselings this morning, and that was the one thing that kept kept coming up. And even for the kids to be, and and I told them, I said, you know, you're. Year, we would do the whole family. We would do the kids and the mother, and the kids would always be almost clear, but they'd have a few things. But uh, and they're coming in from like you know seventh dimension and things, six dimensional beings. But you know, I was talking to the mothers, and I said, you know, the most powerful thing you can teach your kids as soon as they're old enough to understand this is to clear their energies mm -hmm. and to monitor themselves and what they're feeling and learn to say, "Not mine." Mm -hmm. and 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 clear this energy out because they're going to get it they're they're very empathetic you know they're empathic they're telepathic yeah. they're feeling all these energies they're feeling the awesome high energies but they're feeling the low energies too and yeah. so we need to learn to teach them how to clear the lower energies clear their space and uh, maintain that connection with the higher consciousness and energy and that is so important right now Mm -hmm. And we find out in the counseling sessions over and over again that these kids that are coming in from the really high dimensions are hit really hard at age three on. Mm -hmm. At a very early age, they're, they're being uh, hit by these negative influences trying to shut them down mm -hmm. to not access their soul and spirit, the higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. and, so, uh, and so we clear that out and then they just take off after that. But a lot of us... Uh, don't realize how much we've been influenced, not just by social media and everything else, but unseen negative influences that have been hit, hammering on us since day one, almost, especially if you're, if you're an enlightened being and you're incarnated to help, you're going to get hit. It, it's, you know, the old saying, you know, the, um, you know, the moths come to the flame, you know, <laughs> and so, you got to learn how to deal with the moths, you know, yeah. if you're going to walk this place. Yeah. And one other thing I might add too is I was telling them, you know, you need to teach kids the greater their light, the more they're going to mirror back to and amplify other people's darkness. Mm -hmm. And most people will project and blame. And so mm -hmm. rather than own their own stuff, they're going to project and blame. So, so don't, you know, learn to practice loving detachment, allow them their experience, but don't take it on. Don't let them dump into your, mm -hmm. into your field, you know, whatever's happening. Yeah. You know, James, what's, what's some good advice that you can give um, to the parents to work with their kids? We're going into holiday season. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, and, and for a lot of even just adults, that can be a, I hate the word trigger, but it, it can be an emotional time. And, you know, these children, they're so, telepathic empathic you know they're feeding off what mom dad are feeling and then you can go into family environments and if their parents are upset they're feeling that if you know if there are 
lower density family members, they're feeling that. And, and especially when you start entering in alcohol, that can also kids feel everything. So what are, what are some good words of advice? You know, what can we do to kind of protect these kids during the holiday season? (laughs) Boy, that's a tough one. Um, (laughs) You know, we're, we're ha- we have a little gather. We always have a little gathering here and we have some, you know, close friends and family um, come. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I'm, I've surrounded myself with enlightened people or, or people that are okay with, with all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I hate to say, it, I just don't have time for the other stuff anymore. I, I don't want to be around it. I don't want to feel those energies. I don't want to experience, you know, I just don't have time for it. And, and it was really hard for me for a long time to learn to say no, you know, and say, I'm not, no, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, you're going to heal yourself. I'm not going to take on all this crap, you know, and uh, all these projections and blame. And for a while there, I'd start going within and go, God, am I a rotten person? Am I really this bad? You know, and I go, I'm not, I haven't, you know, done anything, you know, it's like, and, and then you have to, to go through that process. And I've done that most of my life. And now I just don't. I don't even entertain it, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, like a good example out in the sky watch field, we're out sky watching the ships are coming in. Everybody's having a really good time. And you always have that one or two people that come up that want to challenge you, you know, and, and, and create problems and things like that. And, you know, they'll come up and they'll say, you know, I, I don't know, I, that those are all satellites, you know, or, or they have something like that, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, I used to say, well, you know, thank you for establishing your ignorance and your character, you know, and then, and then I just disappear and walk away, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, or, or I'd say, as you wish, you know, if that's what you want to believe and just walk away and they don't know what to do with it. You know, they're trying to create an adversarial thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, you know, I don't need their acceptance and approval. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need their love. I don't need their joy. I found that within. So, uh, or acceptance, it's not there, you know? And so I go, well, you know, you can, you know, make this, make this whatever you want, you know, but, but, you know, if you have a, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, if you have a crappy reality, you're going to have a crappy experience. Mm -hmm. And so if you come at this from the ego and negatively and everything, that's, that's the reality that you're going to create. If you come at, at it with an open mind, loving heart and pure intent, you're going to have an awesome experience, but, um, uh, you know, but it's just like, you know, that's why I created the ranch here, you know, the, the ranch. So people of like mind could come here and share and support each other. Yeah. And because there is hardly any support in mainstream, you know, mainstream yeah. education, mainstream new everything there's. And so people are, are coming here and they're going, God, I feel at home. I'm, I can talk about anything. I feel it. This is my family. And, and that's, I think we need to redefine family. Yeah. Redefine you, know, family. you know, there's some people in your family, you just, even Yogananda said that. Yogananda said once, he said, you know, he said, you have your biological family. You know, if your brother's a thief and, and doing drugs and creating problems, you know, you have to accept that, you know, and he said, but you hang out with your spiritual family, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, yeah. and that, I think that's what it's about is that uh you know i think it's time to just pull away for those that want to take you down that negative path like mm-hmm. don't participate anymore in it yeah. just walk away from it and say okay have a good day and no. you know, i think we'll go for a walk in the park you know or no, i think no. we'll you know get out just get outdoors you know say oh well my kids need to get out you know and mm-hmm. out in nature and mm-hmm. and uh, don't go there. Yeah, yeah. I, I do hope family. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At the dinner table, you know, <laughs> you know, just say, oh, I've got, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back and maybe it'll simmer down. Who knows? You know? <laughs> I, I hope this is the year that if parents are feeling this call, that something's changing, that they can start using the powerful word of no, or, you know, yeah. putting their boundaries up. It's just not subject their kids to that. I think yeah. it's it's okay to break tradition or change it, you know, yeah. when, you know, starting the spiritual family Friendsgiving, you know, or if you're going to talk about Thanksgiving or any holiday like that, but stop subjecting your kids on yourself to that. It's, it yeah, really exactly. pained me to see a lot of single friends saying, oh, I got to do this. I'm like, why? Who told you you did? 
Did you There's get that famous that? actor? I can't remember his name. Is he, he's I love this guy. And he goes, yeah, always like, he always goes, that's a special kind of stupid, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a Western guy, he has a big mustache. What's his oh, name? Oh, I know who you mean. Oh, yeah. he with the fabulous voice. Yeah. Really yeah, tall. Yeah, he always these memes come out with him yeah. on it. It just yeah. they're hilarious. Some of the I know you mean. He looks like the Marlboro man. Um, yeah. 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 I just some of the things I, I just can't even react to it. I I said yeah. I I can't even react to it. I just go, okay, you know, it's like, uh, have fun. It doesn't yeah. affect me anymore because I don't need their love and acceptance and approval. And mm -hmm. that's where they get you. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. the thing about it is, um, I'm what a master told me once, he said, the only reason anybody has any power over you is because mm -hmm. you want something from them. Mm -hmm. You want their love, their acceptance, their approval. You want support, either financial or emotional you and all that can be generated from within yeah. and when you generate it from within you're sovereign and then you can be authentic you can mm -hmm. be true to yourself and get on with your own unique soul purpose and i think that's something really key that that uh, be awesome to teach kids this at an early age you know mm -hmm. that you know creator loves you beyond anything you can imagine you can, there's no words for that go mm -hmm. within you know, if you need the divine feminine, Mary's there, you know, mm -hmm. or Kuan Yin's there, or these other beings are there. Whenever you feel like you're not getting something externally, go within. Yeah. And and okay. it's there a thousand fold, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we need to do, even in manifesting, we need to go within and manifest versus, versus being subject to. Mm -hmm. And And the problem with society right now is everything's external, you know. Mm -hmm. You'll be happy if you'll be happy if you get the bronze girl or guy, you know, in the swimming suit playing volleyball, you know, you'll be happy if you get the new car, you know, you'll be happy if you get, you know, these are all external. What happens if they leave you? What happens if somebody smashes or steals your car? What happens if, you know, and it's all be happy if just be happy. It's your natural state. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. don't, it's who you are. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I've, I've said in, in relationships and, you know, with my husband that it's not, it's not someone else's job to make you happy. Mm -hmm. Don't ever put that responsibility on, on someone else. You, it's you and you alone. And, and again, with, you know, going within, I, you know, often said it's the cruelest illusion in this reality is that we're alone. We're, yeah. we're, we're never, we're never <laughs> yeah. alone. <laughs> we can prove that. You know. Yeah. Yep. And you we know, have the technology and, now. Yep. And, and if you are, if you are wanting to find more people in your heart alignment and in your tribe, just know that you're going to find them go out in your life and know that spirit and yourself will only align people that jive with you. I was going, I, I desperately needed a, a massage. And for just a split second, I was worried, what if they're, you know, they're going to make me do this and we don't yeah. align with this. <laughs> and then my next thought was stop it. I will only manifest someone who is in direct alignment with myself. And sure enough, the, the woman who came in, we ended up going 15 minutes past because we were talking the entire time. And yeah. she was so relieved to find somebody else in the area that felt the same way. She, I mean, we even talked about reptilians. So <laughs> you went full reptilian. <laughs> we went full reptilian. It doesn't take me long to go there when you, <laughs> when I meet people. Um, yeah. And, and to know that, and again, you know, with the holidays, like Heidi said, and James, healthy boundaries are yeah. okay. They're, they're very important. Um, so yeah. The kids are watching. The kids, kids are, are watching. Yeah. And you're teaching them and you're teaching yeah. them. My Please. favorite hashtag right now, find the others. Just yeah. find the others. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I mean, I remember, I mean, I remember, I remember back flying by the earth and it wasn't even solid yet, but <laughs> I remember a kid, my childhood just clear as a bell. And I remember my relatives and everything. And, and I remember, you know, one of my, my grandfathers was very angry and very, uh, he, well, but he had cancer at the time. He had um, jaw cancer and stuff like that. So he was not a happy camper, you know, but we knew that when we were a kid, you know, we, we sensed his energy and what, and he was very angry and, you know, wasn't happy, you know, and he's probably on drugs and things like that. But, but, uh, you know, I, I thought about that and I just dismissed it, you know, well, that's his, you know, but not all kids do that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it's like the kids know that nothing's hidden, 
-hmm. you know, they, they know, and, you know, we we're little kids that go, how come grandpa's angry? How come grandpa's so angry? And, and he loved us, but he couldn't express it, you know, cause he's old school. Also too, he, he was, had severe challenges, physical challenges. So, you know, if, if they would have said, oh, you know, grandpa's got cancer and he's really sick and he's not, oh, that's where that's coming from. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's done. Then you don't take it personal. Yeah. And, and that's what, you know, tell the kids the truth, you know, help them to depersonalize what they're feeling and, and honor what they're feeling and show them, hey, it's not yours. You, you are feeling this. This is real. And maybe you need to send him some love, you know, maybe, you, you know, send him some healing if you can, you know, or whatever. But it's I think it's all about being honest and upfront, you know, with the kids and, and realize they're feeling everything and they're sensing everything and they know they know what's going on. Yep. Absolutely. You know, my kids all, my kids often remind me we were in a different state and we were going to go to this, um, it was an escape room and this yeah. state is much more blue. And I just didn't know with the kids if they're going to require the face coverings or not. And so I'm in the car with the kids and just saying, well, you know, if they do require them when, then we're, we're leaving, I'm not do, I'm not participating in that. And all three of them instantly said, mom, stop manifesting that there's going to be an issue. Like, it's going to be great. Just focus on the fact that we're going to have an amazing time. It's not going to be required. There's going to be no issues. And that's that. And so again, you know, these kids come in and they are our teachers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Often, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a tough one. I mean, I, <clears throat> I always tell parents, I said, you know, do your own research, bottom line, do your own research, um, you know, on everything you know, on the, the thing and the face and all that stuff. Do your own research, look at the real science and you'll see that that it's unhealthy any way you look at it, you know, and and uh, and it has consequences, you know, but, uh, you know, the problem is, is they're being fed all this misinformation through the mainstream media and, and it's all profit driven and mm -hmm. people don't realize that it's, mm -hmm. they're they're making profit through fear and they create the object that creates the fear and then they they create the problem and then they we have the solution it's going to cost this much money we're all going to be billionaires and, and that's how it works yeah. and they still fall for it. <coughs> excuse me Bless you. like they need to first recognize that you know they're being programmed like that's funny when you talk about these people in this energy i have to sneeze <laughs> it's like yeah, okay get rid of that <laughs> I hope this holiday, I hope anyone who has any inkling of something doesn't feel right, that they trust that. Just go. Yeah. That's the first step. Just click, turn it off, and go within. Everything yeah. You do that. Yeah. And, you know, love yourself enough to excuse yourself from that situation and love your kids enough to excuse them from the situation. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I would, I would much rather eat at some crappy fast food place, you know, and be in good energy than then eat a really good meal with people you don't like, you know, or can't be around, you know? And, you know, one thing the Palladians told me, I love this. They said on earth, there's a serious problem that's stunting your evolution. And they said, one person is misbehaving. The other person is stuffing it and not telling the other person what they need to evolve. And so you're just in this vicious circle and there's no evolution, no healing, no forward movement. And so the people that are stuffing have to stop stuffing and start communicating. No, that doesn't work for me. Can we do something different? You know, and the people that are doing it need the feedback. And if they keep doing it, isolate them, you know, say, okay, look, you know, we've, we've talked about this and you want to keep going there and then you can do that somewhere else, a healthy boundary there. And, and I think that's where we're going right now is, is we can't stuff anymore. We can't ignore the elephant in the room. We, you know, we can't, and that's all being amplified right now. So you can't you can't sweep it under the rug anymore and and act like it doesn't exist, you know, because it, it's all coming up to see, you know, you can't get away from it. The line is drawn in the sand. People yeah. have got to make sovereign choices. It's kind of now or never really. Yeah. It it is. We are at that point. And yeah, you know, and and with the stuffing it, I I I just don't want to, you know, me personally is 
I no longer want to put my energy in spaces where I know that the people around me are silencing me. They, they yeah. don't want me to talk because that would be too jarring for them. Anything that I would want to share or discuss it. I, I just, I won't put myself in those situations any right. longer. I think that's real important. You know, that's real important. You know, I always highly support that is that, um, and people need to listen yeah. and, and ask questions. Sometimes you don't have to confront somebody. You can just ask questions. So how does that fit into this and this and this? You know, so, well, yeah. you know, I heard about this. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, and then you mm -hmm. walk away and you planted some seeds and then they figure it out later, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on. Yeah. That's being the solution of choosing better. There's a skill trade or a business or an establishment that, that lines up with you. You just have to find yeah. Like I even changed my hairdresser and I'm like, if I can't speak my truth and go full reptilian on you, you're not, you're not getting my money. <laughs> Give space for me to talk my stuff. And, and my new gal, we go all the things. I'm like, take my money, like find the others and get the energy moving in the positive direction. It yeah, goes, find, find a hairdresser that's awake, you know, and, and support yeah. them and their family, yeah. you know. It's like, and restaurants. And yeah. I'm in the land of ego. I'm in La La Land. And more people are more worried about what others think of them by, yeah. you know, than making the right choice. So it's easy for us to find each other because we're the only ones who are like, not going to go there. I'm going there. I can see your smile. So it's... Yeah, um, in every, it, yeah, in, in every, almost every agency, every every it doesn't matter whatever institution you're in as you go up the top and people all trying to get to the top and they'll do whatever's necessary to get to the top and sometimes it's called selling your soul yeah. and uh, we can't do that anymore mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. what you get at the top is not what you're seeking anyway because there's right. no love, there's no joy there's no acceptance no approval up there there's just a bunch of people feeding off of each other you know Mm -hmm. And and so why would you want to join that group anyway? <laughs> you know? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I and, and I wanted to share. And you know, we keep on saying like like the the line is drawn in the sand. About a year ago, um, some of my galactics came through, and they their message was, "She's chosen. Gaia is chosen." Even I said, it "Doesn't even feel right calling her Gaia anymore." I keep on wanting to call her Tara now. So yeah. it's, it's Tara. She's chosen, and she has decided to go with her ascension because again she is her own living being and so I said okay well like well, how is that applying to me and they said because she's chosen we have to honor her free will and we have been filtering filtering through some of these higher vibrational waves that have been coming your way so wouldn't it be so physically jarring for you but since she has now chosen we can no longer do that. We have to back out. And so you guys are going to be feeling the full brunt of her ascension. So it really is, you know, shit or get off the pot because this, this is coming and how can we prepare our vessels and ourselves and go through this with her? Yeah. And, and just as you have Gaia for the earth or Terra or whatever name you want to give it, there's other systems that have their earth mother or whatever and they're talking <laughs> and they're merging with each other mm -hmm. and so and so that's it's really powerful i mean i saw one of the i oh god i got i wrote it down i the name the like the pleiadians that you know some of their planets era and things like that have their goddess energy or their mother energy mm -hmm. and and they're merging with earth and so so it's it's amazing what's going on and now she's got full backup you know it's like all the batteries are charged and ready to go and and you're not going to stop this so that's what i'm saying there's alignments and dimensional alignments that are happening right now that everything is loaded and ready to go and it's not optional anymore you know we we have to shift into service you know we have to be kind and loving to each other and and align with universal law because there's the you know, it's not really optional anymore. The earth has chosen and she is going to the next level yeah. and we can go with her or not. You know, it's, it's, uh, we'll, we'll go into the fourth dimension and play around in the lower fourth dimension and, and hang out with a bunch of other uh, disfigured <laughs> people. 
<laughs> you know, disconnecting, just figuring it. I mean, in the lower astral level, everything's there. I mean, things that go bump in the night, you know, shadow beings, um, low level uh, reptilian gray, things like that are all that. And that's, and, you know, forms of humanity that have fallen, you know, are in that dimension. And in the middle of the fourth dimension, you have everyday people just incarnated and things like that. In the higher fourth dimension, you have teachers and guides and things. Mm -hmm. But they're still caught because they they have some kind of religious programming or cultural programming or something that's that's keeping them from unity consciousness. And so they're still stuck in the fourth dimension. But when you get through the fourth dimension into the fifth, then you're in unity consciousness and universal law and the beings are working on there. And, and so if you want to go play in that lower fourth dimension, you know, after the hammer comes down or, or the reaction to your actions or karma, whatever, have fun with that because mm -hmm. that's where you're going to go, you know. So your consciousness determines where you go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it, it magnetizes you to a level that's in alignment with your consciousness. It's not like somebody saying you're a bad doobie, you have to go here. It's like it's automatic. It, you know, it's it's amazing system, you know, but, uh, you know, the thing too is that we have to realize that, you know, not to say there's a jealous, wrathful God, um, we, we create that within ourselves, our own guilt right, and our own actions and negative action things. That that's what lowers our frequency, our belief systems and things like that. The amount of fear, guilt and unworthiness that a lot of re religions perpetuate that holds you down, that keeps you down. So if you focus on love and joy and bliss until you become it and you're in service to humanity and the earth and service to the creator and all creation, that's gonna take you out of this loop. And it's gonna, but it, there's not, you know, people say there's these lords of karma and there's all this stuff out there and everything else. It's a system and it's designed, it's automatic and uh, it's an amazing system and you do have your light review, you know, it's not judgment. It's so much, okay, this is what you did. How can you do things better? Yeah. And, and when you go before your light review, you go, light review, you go, Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that, but you know, it's all about forgiving yourself and moving on and gain the wisdom from the experience because you come down here, you're thrown into this big toxic soup almost of consciousness and energy and you do the best you can while you're down here. And not all the decisions we make are, are, are wise, you might say, but we're gaining the wisdom through that experience. So now we know what we don't want, we can start manifesting what we do want, but we need to forgive ourselves for creating that experience and the other people and events that we magnetize to us, you know, for that lesson and move on. But, uh, you know, it, it's so important to realize that is that there's a huge burn when you cross over this energy comes through and a lot of that stuff is just cleaned off yeah. and, and you move on. But, uh, and I can say that from experience because I've done it two or three times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I know that's a real event and how it works. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's, you know, it, there, a lot of this, uh, I think it's time. A lot of these beings that are here right now get sent to their soul review. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I say good luck with your light review. Have fun with that, you know, because it's, it's coming. Yeah, absolutely. Well, James, thank you so much for all of your advice, this amazing conversation. Um, you know, we, we really kind of wanted to take it up to the higher dimensionals for a little bit and discuss and especially going into the holiday season, but yeah, we really appreciate your time and everything you had to share. Awesome. And thanks for having me on the show and, and I'll sh be sure and get this out. Send me a link and I'll get it out through our network too. It's a really good conversation. Yes. And what's probably. the best way for everyone? I mean, everyone I think knows how to find you. <laughs> yeah. you. But I can't believe I, I was watching this guy and he says, yeah, he goes, I've been doing this for over 20 years. And I go, Oh my God. I mean, he said he is 36 years old and I was doing it. 15 years before that but uh anyway so we've been doing this for a long time but yeah if if you go to easy.org or go to eseti stargate or or uh, any of those just type in eseti it'll come up and the all... ranch for the public you reopen in may is it because i know it's close probably to... may we're gonna we're kind of playing it by ear okay it's kind of like we're seeing how on how events unfold and when, when the timing's right well sure 
Yeah. We operate differently. We don't have a clock and a calendar. We we go by events, <laughs> like yeah. Spirit does. I get, it. I get it. And yeah, and again, Heidi and I have both been to your ranch. An incredible time. You know, when I was there, Heidi's been there a couple times. So I highly recommend to everyone listening and viewing if you can make it to the ranch. It's an unforgettable, unforgettable experience. Yeah, I, I always tell you, said is where debunkers come to die. <laughs> 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 and let's work on that um getting the kids together <laughs> yeah we will we'll get some some major uh events for the children up here absolutely yeah. so for so everybody listening stay tuned because we will be following up some information for the spring and summer Yay. all right thank, thank you james thank you uh -huh. keep up good work